<clears throat> Hello, everybody. I'm Ted Canaris. I'm a pastor at Community Christian Church. I recently planted launched our newest location here in the Downers Grove area in the western suburb of Chicago, and I'm also a network leader helping oversee and guide some of our other churches and locations around the western suburbs. For maybe some of you who aren't familiar, Community Christian Church has been around for 30 years, planted by our founding pastors, John and Dave Ferguson. I'm sure many of you are familiar with them. And over those last three decades, we have been just passionately committed to our mission, which is helping people find their way back to God. And over these last 30 years, that's exactly what we've seen happen. We've seen thousands and thousands of people finding their way back to God. And in this most recent chapter of the church, this sort of unprecedented chapter of the church in this COVID-19 season, we've been really wrestling with what does it look like for us to maybe expand and adapt the way we do church to really saturate our communities in a way that we haven't been able to do in the past. In the past, we have this sort of prevailing model, right? The macro church, and as we're talking about through this think tank, what does it look like for us to plant not just macro, but micro churches? And so for us as a church, as we look at these sort of two models, we're trying to think, okay, how do we create a model that's a both and and not an either or? Can we be a church that does both the house church and a prevailing model church in partnership together sharing resources, sharing equipping, sharing all the things that a macro church can do and a micro church can't do, but with all the reach and with all the flexibility and mobility that a micro church can do that a macro church can't do. And so how do we develop this space between? And that's what we're calling our 3C community strategy. We're looking to, do, to launch full expressions of Community Christian Church but small expressions of Community Christian Church throughout the Chicago area and around the world. One of the doors that has really opened up for us in this season is just connections in cities all around the U.S. and all around the world through our online worship services. And through communityonline.tv, we have made just thousands of new connections with all kinds of new people who perhaps are looking for an opportunity to plan a church in their house or in their neighborhood or in their coffee shop. I mean, you name it. And uniquely, Community Christian Church, as a multi-site church, we have so many system structures, um, support apparatuses that typically I don't think are available to somebody looking to start something small or something in a new city or in a new place that we feel like we can provide in a really powerful way to empower them to do much more than they could without that connection. And we also believe that as the prevailing model church, we have so much to gain and to learn from and to grow and, and so many more people to reach through this partnership as well. So again, it's how do we develop this space between, between the house church and the macro church? Can we be a church that does both? So this phrase that we use to describe it, this definition, 3C community, is really uh, some of our language we use to describe what it means to be a follower of Jesus and what, it, it, what our like sort of minimal, essential ecclesiology is. And the three C's are con uh, celebrate, relationship with God, connect, relationship with the church, right, and contribute, which is our relationship to the world. So we believe every follower of Jesus needs to be committed to these three things and every community, every church needs to be committed to these three things. So how do we boil down all that we do at like a macro prevailing model church like this and make it available for a micro expression of the church in a way that feels organic, in a way that can really reach people where they are at with leaders that maybe won't fit in this model, but would be incredibly successful in planning reproducing house churches around our community. I mean, this is what we're seeing happen as we've talked about in some of the other videos all around the world, but really not taking root and flourishing here in the West. And so we're excited to start exploring this. And I just want to emphasize this on the very front end. We are in beta phase of 3C communities here at Community Christian Church. We do not have all the answers. We are very much trying to figure this out. And one of the reasons why we're excited to be a part of this think tank. So as we're doing this, we put together a diverse 
a small team of some of our leaders and we really think it's important that this team be as diverse as possible because as we reach into sort of the nooks and crannies all around our city, all around our community and around our world, those nooks and crannies look very different than one another. And so we need to develop something that works in a variety of different cultures. Um, one of our team members, Rodrigo Cano, who's on this call and joining us today, he comes from a Hispanic background, grew up in Mexico, came to the States, planted a Spanish speaking church in Michigan and is now a pastor on our staff leading one of our churches in Aurora, is working on translating this into Spanish and does this work in Hispanic and Latino culture. Um, we also have another one of our leaders, Eric Dorsey, who has been really spearheading what we call our community freedom which is planting essentially churches, 3C communities in prisons all around the Chicago area and in the Western suburbs and hopefully around the US. So with this sort of diverse and dynamic team, we think that we can develop something that can utilize all the resources, all the equipping, all the stuff that a macro church can do really well because of the number of people, because of the amount of resources, but how can we make that available in a way that's not overwhelming, in a way that isn't just going to like um, steamroll um, a smaller expression that needs to have, you know, a little bit of a different look, a little different feel. Um, so how can we really do this together? And one of the big lessons we've learned so far through partnering with Rob Wagner and others who are doing this well here in the U.S. is we need to primarily focus on training up missionaries who are going into communities to reaching new people in a new way. 3C communities as a macro church, prevailing model church, trying to develop, you know, house church, small but full expressions of who we are around the U.S. We don't want to just gather the same people, right, in a different way. Like that's not a win for us in the 3C communities. We're looking to reach and gather new people, people who are far from God and gathering them in this new but full expression of the church. So for example, we don't want like a, one of our small groups to just sort of peel out and say, hey, we're gonna do our own thing over here and sort of ride off into the sunset with one another. I mean, that might feel really good at first, but that is not like a dream for a community on mission. That's not who we are. That's not who we as the church are called to be. And so we're looking to train up and identify leaders and equip them and coach them to plant new communities with new people who are far from God and reproduce that in other communities and in other places. So we've been in the midst of developing sort of a five phase process, really taking a lot of cues from Rob and others who are doing a similar thing of saying, how do we first identify who these leaders are and help you know encourage them and speak into them and something that they might not see in themselves we think we have a lot of people in our churches who who have these giftings who have the the calling to do this but don't feel like they have permission or don't feel like they have a pathway to do it so how do we identify those people and how do we assess those people and say is this really for you and how can we encourage and equip you along that journey so Phase one is, is really that assessment and, and speaking into them. Phase two is equipping, right? We need to equip them. So they feel called, they feel like they have some of the essential giftings, they're beginning to have a vision for what this could look like in their neighborhood perhaps. You know, how are we going to walk alongside them for a period of time to help them think through the big questions, right? Who are they trying to reach? How are they trying to reach? What does a healthy life rhythm for them as a follower of Jesus look like in this new phase? What does a healthy life rhythm for a community look like in this phase? What are some of the lessons to be learned about effective ways to reach people who are far from God and maybe ways that should be avoided, right? We've all learned these lessons. How can we pass those on in a way that these new leaders can really understand and grasp and be coached through that process? So our hope is as we identify this, these leaders, we'll then equip and train them with a cohort of others, a small group, maybe three or four others, who are gonna be also planning one of these three C communities. Beyond that, the next phase is really the launch phase. This is identifying your people as you've done through the first phases, but then reaching out to them, maybe starting to gather them, and really having a church sort of emerge, right? As Rob says, 
seeing this church emerge as you're reaching out into the community. So it's first assess and identify these leaders, second is equip, and then it's really the launch phase followed by ongoing coaching. We've put together sort of a centralized coaching team where we can just pour into these leaders and build them up and give them any kind of resources that they need. For example, they've got kids in their micro church, in their three seat community. We can help you reach and minister to those kids and families in a way that would be really hard to do if they weren't connected to a prevailing model of church. We also have all kinds of resources for these folks um, through our big idea process. Um, some of you maybe read the book, Big Idea, the big idea that Dave and John and a few others on her staff wrote about how we sort of collaboratively plan out our content for the year and how we lead and disciple our congregations. Well, we can provide that to our 3C community leaders in a way that we think will really empower them to do ministry and to reach these people in a way that they really couldn't do or would really be hard to do on their own. And so first, we want to identify. Second, we want to equip and train. Thirdly, we want to launch. Fourthly, we want to provide that ongoing coaching and support. And then fifthly, it's multiply. You'll notice that this is very similar to Casey Underground uh, and their kind of five-fold missionary pathway. Uh, thanks, Rob. <laughs> but you know, these are just some really best practices for how we can develop and create a leadership pathway for these 3C community leaders, microchurch leaders to be identified, equipped, trained, released, and supported, and how we can help them to then multiply and launch and release new leaders to launch new communities. So there's so much more that I could say, and we're supposed to keep these to 10 minutes, I'm just two minutes over. But we are in the beta phase of this. We're identifying 15 folks who, uh, in this first phase, wanna be trained up and launch a 3C community around Chicago and some globally. And so we're kind of handpicking some of those people in this first round who we think can uh, learn and grow, be successful, as we're also learning together as a team on how to do this well. So we're thankful to be a part of this think tank. We know we have so much to learn here. Uh, and if you have any questions, anything that we can help any of you with, we would love to do that as well as we learn how to do this, how to reach 